Hello and welcome back to the Linux Panic YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be looking at making our DSLR camera compatible with our operating system so we can then use it as we want to. So, let's get into the video and why we would need this. So, let's pretend that you are a Linux user, you only insist on using Linux, and you also stream to Twitch, YouTube, the various other sites. And you want to use, you want to upgrade from your 1080p web camera to your actual DSLR. Now this is very much valid for my case because I also do stream, and I have a DSLR my cable at my hands. So this is why I was looking into doing it, and I thought I'd make a video on it as well. So first thing we need to do, we need to upgrade, update, and upgrade our system. So we do sudo apt update, and then sudo apt upgrade. From there, we do the usual, feed it the password, wait for it to be done. As we can see here, a couple updates that need to be done. This list will fly through. I'll ignore this for the time being. Uh, there is a text guide available for this on my GitHub, which I will leave a link to in the description. So first thing that we need to do is we need to download some software. We need to download GPhoto 2. A video for Linux 2 version 2 loopback utilities, video for Linux version 2 loopback DKMS, and FFmpeg. So, in my case, if you've got the my GitHub repository open, you can just copy paste this in. This will install. As we can see here, I already have all of this installed. This was for testing purposes, but this will then go through and install what's needed. And that's for Debian based. For Arch based systems, you will need to do the same except with Pac Man. And for Fedora based systems, you'll need to do the same but with DNF instead of uh, apt. Again, it doesn't know what's going on. But once we've done that, we need to enable the kernel module, which will then allow the system to work with the camera. Now, this kernel module will not load automatically. So to make it load automatically, what we can do is add it to the modules file. So to do that, we do sudo nano or vim, your choice, slash etc slash modules. And we need to come to the bottom of this list and add in DSLR hyphen webcam to this list. And then it will then tell the system to load this module upon boot. Now, if you don't do this, the model's not going to load, and you're going to have to do sudo mod probe v2 l what well v4 uh, l2 loopback exclusive underscore caps equals one max underscores buffers equals two every single time you want to do it just to make sure it loads. But in the case of this, with it having with it being here, it'll load every single time without fail. Once we've done that, we need to actually add in our configuration to that. So to do that, again, sudo nano or vim, your choice, nano slash etc slash mod probe, have a look at spell, mod probe dot d slash dslr webcam dot conf. And what this will do is it then bring up the configuration. Now, in this case, um, this has the entire command in, so it then just boots up from launch and then it is visible and seen. And now this is the point where we plug in our camera. So I'm just going to unplug mine and plug mine back in. And what should come up is a window like this. Now I'm just going to drop this as a do nothing and continue so it then doesn't ask me what it wants to do with the camera ever again. Leave this file. Make sure you do save, of course, because if you don't, it's not going to work. Now what we're going to do is we're going to test just to make sure that it's actually being seen properly. So gphoto2 space hyphen hyphen summary. And what we can see here, it could not claim the USB device. Now that is an easy fix. Now to do that, what we need to do is we need to come to, to go through and find this. Now, the reason why it could not claim the USB device is because there were already processes with this on. So what we have to do is we have to kill the processes. Now we can do that with kill minus nine, 
and the process ID. So in this case, it's three one six three, and then the kill process seven seven four one four. We do clear, and then ask for the summary once again. We then get this. Now in this case, it's given me all the summary, but as we can see here, we are currently using a Nikon D thirty five hundred. And the format is JPEG undefined, so all this, it just gives us the entire configuration setup that is known by the system to the camera. Well, but that is on the camera to the system, which is good. Now, we can actually try and capture an image. Now, to do that, we just copy this and paste, copy this command, which is gphoto to capture image and download. In this case, it's on, the image goes to the camera and we can't access the camera so it then just deletes it but it confirms it works because you should have heard the shutter if you hear the shutter it means it's working now what we can do what we now need to do is just ask the system hey where's the camera at and as we can see here the device dummy which is the camera is currently at dev video zero which means the camera is there and that is functional. So what we need to do, well, what we can do next is to make the camera actually start streaming, the streaming data to the computer and to the device dev video. So to do that, we copy this command in, which is, says, hey, look, start streaming. We do this, hit the camera click, and this now means we have the camera streaming. And you're probably wondering, Nick, where's the camera? Well, hello. Welcome to the 100th video of Linux Panic. I hope you're having a wonderful day so far, but this is currently in manual mode. As you can see here, I'm just playing with it. Um, Gphoto 2 will not work with the camera unless it is in manual mode or one of the letter modes. So in this case, it's in manual. I'm just giving it a quick tweak. And here we are. Now, this can be accessed by any bit of software. So, for example, if we ask for VLC Media Player and say, hey, look, I want VLC. We just do Media, Open Capture Device, Video Device Name. In this case, it is Video Zero. Select Play. And what do we know? We now have two versions. Now, this isn't absolutely bang on every single time. There's a little bit of delay there, which is to be expected consider considering we're going over USB 2 into our computer and then telling it to say, hey, look, catch up. As we can see here, VLC Media Player is just a little bit behind. But it's functional and it works. So this is very good. Now, I've used this for streaming myself. I did this, what's the day today? I use this on the 4th, Tuesday the 4th. And I can say that this does not draw too hard on the system. I was streaming at 30 FPS with this camera also streaming at the same time to the computer and then from the computer into OBS and onwards from there. And it functions amazingly. As we can see here, it is currently functioning at 163 FPS, which is directly from the camera. Now, if this were... USB 3, then I might be, able, might be able to get a bit more, and there might be a bit more responsiveness. As we can see here, we get instant response out of the camera directly, but with VLC, we don't. So it's, it's a, there's a little bit of funkiness there, which is to be expected because it's, being, it's already being fed through, well, a USB 2 cable into the computer and then into VLC, whereas with OBS here, it's just instant. But it's functional and it works. Now, this video would not be possible if it wasn't for uh, a website called crackthecode.co. Uh, it's made by a person uh, called Ben Chapman, as we can see here. So the source material for this video does come from Mr. Ben Chapman, and as such, and, and because of the license he has applied to it, which is the Attribution Server Like License 4.0 International, I have to say where I got it from. And in this case, I got it from him. I will leave a link to the website in to his website with this one in the description, as well as my GitHub, which also has the same thing. Anyway, 
I would like to thank you all very much for watching. I'd like to thank you for 100 successful videos, and I do hope you do continue to enjoy the videos. Anyway, I have been Nick, you have been amazing, and I hope you have a good rest of your day, and goodbye.